A little man stirred the coals again and blew on them to make them burn brighter. I hate this fog, I hate this place, and I am less than fond of Griff. Tyrion still had the poison mushrooms he had plucked from the grounds of Illyrio's manse, and there were days when he was sore tempted to slip them into Griff's supper. The trouble was, Griff scarce seemed to eat. Duck and Yandry pushed against the poles. Yasilla turned the tiller. Young Griff pushed the shy maid away from the broken tower, whose windows stared down like blind black eyes. Overhead, her sail hung limp and heavy. The water deepened under her hull, until their poles could not touch the bottom. But still the current pushed them downstream, until... All Tyrion could see was something massive rising from the river, humped and ominous. He took it for a hill looming above a wooded island, or some colossal rock overgrown with moss and ferns and hidden by the fog. As the shy maid grew nearer, though, the shape of it came clearer. A wooden keep could be seen beside the water, rotted and overgrown. Slender spires took form above it, some of them snapped off like broken spears. Roofless towers appeared and disappeared, thrusting blindly upward. Halls and galleries drifted past, graceful buttresses, delicate arches, fluted columns, terraces and bowers, all ruined, all desolate, all fallen. The grey moss grew quickly here, covering the fallen stones in great mounds and archways, up the sides of high stone walls. The fog concealed three quarters of the palace, but what they glimpsed was more than enough for Tyrion to know that this island fastness had been ten times the size of the Red Keep, and a hundred times more beautiful. He knew where he was. The Palace of Love, he said softly. The ruin was sad enough, but knowing what it had been made it even sadder. There was laughter here once, Tyrion thought. There were gardens bright with flowers and fountains sparkling golden in the sun. These steps once rang with the sound of lovers' footsteps, and beneath that broken dome marriages beyond count were sealed with a kiss. His thoughts turned to Tysha, who had so briefly been his lady wife. It was Jamie he thought, despairing. It was my own blood, my big, strong brother. When I was small, he brought me toys, barrel hoops and blocks and a carved wooden lion. He gave me my first pony and taught me how to ride him. When he said he had bought you for me, I never doubted him. Why would I? He was Jamie, and you were just some girl who played a part. I had feared it from the start. From the moment you first smiled at me and let me touch your hand, my own father could not love me. Why would you if not for gold? Through the long grey fingers of the fog, he heard again the deep shuddering thrum of a bowstring snapping taut, the grunt Lord Tywin made as the quarrel took him beneath the belly, the slap of cheeks on stone as he sat back down to die. Wherever whores go, he said. And where is that? Tyrion wanted to ask him. Where did Tysha go, father?